group of visiting journalists from Germany, so I would ask our regulars to behave. <laughs> what? Sorry? Yeah, I couldn't tell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, good, af uh, yes, good afternoon. Uh, this morning, the Secretary General spoke at the Security Council meeting on cooperation between the UN and the African Union. In the 20 years since its creation, he said the African Union has shown its determination to work towards integration, peace, and prosperity on the continent. Collaboration between the UN and the African Union has never been stronger, the Secretary General said, but major challenges remain, including conflicts, unconstitutional government changes. Turning to climate, the Secretary General said that for many Africans, this is not a distant threat, but a daily reality. As we prepare for the COP27 uh, next month in Egypt, Mr. Guterres urged leaders, especially from the group of 20 countries, to finally take the urgent action that is needed. He called on all leaders in the Council and on the African continent and beyond to spare no effort in supporting the African Union so it can achieve its goals. Uh, turning to South Sudan, our peacekeeping mission tells us they are deeply concerned about the fighting between armed groups in Fashoda County in Upper Nile State, which has resulted in the loss of life, abduction of women, and displacement of more than 8,000 people. Our mission is providing protection and doing its utmost to facilitate the provision of humanitarian assistance to affected families who are seeking sanctuary at the mission's base in Kodok. Nicholas Haysom, the head of the peacekeeping mission, condemned the violence and called for an immediate end to hostilities. He's also urging local leaders to restore security in the area. In addition, the mission is trying to reach an agreement that will enable peacekeepers to conduct patrols to defuse tensions and help end the fighting. A uh, quick update from Malawi, where our team there, led by the acting resident coordinator Maria Ribeiro, is supporting, local, uh, supporting authorities in responding to a surge in cholera cases. As of this past Sunday, the outbreak has claimed 117 lives. Across the country, cases jumped from 1,000 to more than 4,200 in the last two months alone. The UN Children's Fund has delivered water and sanitation supplies to 1.5 million people and has led mass media and community mobilization efforts. For its part, the World Health Organization has trained over 1,000 health workers on cholera treatment, surveillance, and case management while providing expertise in reaching 1.3 million at-risk people with a single dose and 110,000 with two doses of the cholera vaccine. Currently, Malawi's National Cholera Response Plan has, remained, has a remaining funding gap of about $13.2 million. Our uh, Central Emergency Response Fund, the UN Central Emergency Response Fund, has approved a million dollars to provide continuing support. Uh, turning to Iran, I wanted to flag a statement from Catherine Russell, the executive director of the UN Children's Fund. She said she was extremely concerned by continuing reports of children and adolescents being killed, injured, and detained amid the ongoing public unrest that we're seeing in the country. Our thoughts are with the families of those who have been killed and injured, she said, and we share their grief, she added. UNICEF calls for the protection of all children from all forms of violence and harm, including during conflict and political events. Violence against children by anyone in any context is indefensible. And our friends in Geneva, the World Meteorological Organization, released a report today that says the supply of electricity from clean energy sources must double in the next eight years to limit global temperature increase. Otherwise, there is a, a risk that climate change, more extreme weather, water and stress, water stress will undermine our energy security and even jeopardize renewable energy supplies. The energy sector is currently the source of around three quarters of global greenhouse gas emissions. However, WMO says that now is the time to accelerate the transition to renewables, but this requires long-term planning, bold policy action uh, to spur investment. You can find the report online. Speaking of reports, our friend the UN Development Program today warned that 55 developing economies, which, has, which accounts for more than half of the world's poorest people, need debt relief now to avert a major systemic development crisis. The warning comes as the World Bank IMF uh, annual meetings are taking place this week. According to NDP's news, new reports, if these countries do not, access to, do not get access to effective debt restructuring, 
poverty will rise, investments in climate adaptation and mitigation will not happen, particularly since the countries affected are more the most climate vulnerable in the world. The report also lays out a number of policy actions for debt restructuring that could help stop the debt crisis in its tracks. You can find the report on the interweb. Today, we com commemorate the 10th anniversary of the International Day of the Girl Child. In a message for the day, the Secretary General notes that many girls today face enormous challenges, pointing out that they may have had their education ended by the COVID pandemic, and they may have been forced from their homes by conflict. He says he's extremely concerned by the continuing exclusion of girls and, uh, young, and women from education in Afghanistan. He once again urges the Taliban to let girls learn. More than ever, Mr. Guterres stresses, we must renew our commitment to work together so that girls enjoy and exercise their rights and can play full and equal parts in their communities and societies. Investing in girls is investing in our common future. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we will have some guests, and that will be the co-chairs of the Global Investors for Sustainable Development Alliance. And that is Leila Fouri, the Chief Executive Officer of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, excuse me, and Jose Vinals, the Group Chairman of Standard Charter. Uh, they will be joined by the Assistant Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs, Na uh, Navid Hanif, and they will be here to brief you on the outcome of the annual meeting of the Alliance, uh, to which the Secretary General will speak and address tomorrow. Yes, Pam. Thank you, Steph. Two questions, separate topics. One on the grain deal. Um, when Grinspan and, and Griffiths go to Moscow Sunday, presumably, um, is the, are there other messages that are being conveyed in terms of the war other than the grain deal that they're there to deal with? Will there be any communication? And has the SG made any communication um, with President Putin on this topic? No, uh, he's not spoken to President Putin on this topic since he last told you. Uh, when he, sp he spoke to President and Putin. And on Greenspan? Uh, and on uh, Rebecca Greenspan and uh, Martin Griffiths. Still expected to go to Moscow on Sunday. Uh, I mean, our, our position on the ongoing war is, is clear. Um, obviously, we will uh, listen. Uh, they will listen to the Russian counterparts. Uh, the focus is on, um, on, as the Secretary General, as we've said before, on extending and expanding the grain deal and also on, uh, <coughs> on ensuring the, the facilitation of a Russian uh, grain and, very importantly, Russian fertilizer uh, so it can reach uh, the global marketplace, which so direly needs that. All right, thank you. And no other messages that might be... Well, I, let's, let's, let's wait for the discussions to happen. Okay. All right. And on um, Good Day the Girl, sorry. I said there were two. Yeah, yeah. On day the... Oh, I thought that was a... Oh, I thought that was three. Eyes. Okay. No, no, it's... <laughs> no, sorry. That's just me stretching. That's all. <laughs> anyway, sorry. It's okay. Um, <laughs> on day of the girl... Um, could you be more specific on the message of the Secretary General to the Taliban about school? In other words, get... get well, I mean, the, the message has been clear. How, how can you expect any country to have a future if you exclude girls from schools, right? I mean, you're, 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 you're hampering and hamstring your own, your own development, your own societies. Uh, this is a message that the Secretary General and his representatives on the ground have pushed um, out extremely uh, directly and continue to, to do so. And since you weren't rolling your eyes, um, just on that, is there, um, uh, has there been any communication between the Secretary General and um, the Taliban no. about this? I mean, there's been, I mean, the Secretary General has not uh, spoken to any uh, members of the Taliban as far as I can uh, remember those. It, it, the, the the contacts that we have are on the ground, uh, in order to operate uh, operate our, our programs in support of a the lot Afghan of people. UN agencies. Content. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank Deji. you. Yeah. Uh, just one question. Uh, today, Israel and Lebanon have been reached a um, agreement on the maritime borders, and it seems that will settle the disputes for the past few months. So is there any reaction from the Secretary General on this uh, development? Sure. I mean, it's, it's obviously uh, positive news. We've seen those, uh, those media reports 
uh, relating to a possible agreement uh, between the two countries regarding their maritime border. Uh, the United Nations remains closely engaged with the parties and stands ready to continue uh, to support this process as requested and in close coordination with the U.S., um, whom the parties have entrusted as a mediator on the, on the maritime border issue. Yep. Um, you made a reference to the crisis in Iran mm -hmm. and the children being killed. Um, the yeah, sorry, oh, yeah. go ahead. Um, the Iranian human rights groups uh, have reported that so far 19 children under 18 have been killed during the protests. Has your country team in Iran been able to provide you with further updates with uh, um, uh, new figures? And uh, does the United Nations, and specifically the Secretary General, uh, have any plan to appeal to the Iranian authorities to exercise restraint and well, make mean, sure that we, children we, are we, protected? Uh, we have no way, uh, we, we don't have a mandate to, to to have an exact count of the figures. I mean, we've seen the figures that have been uh, reported, and I think Catherine Russell was very clear in her message, which the Secretary General fully backs. There is no, uh, uh, there's no reason or excuse for violence against children in any context. Uh, the Secretary General's appeals have been both public through what I say here uh, every day and through the meetings he's had with uh, the president, when uh, President Raisi, when he was here, and the foreign minister, and I think we even mentioned in the, in, in, it was even mentioned in the, um, in the readout. Um, sorry, just a quick follow-up that, um, just a quick follow-up that um, after President Raisi returned to Tehran, uh, I understand that there has been a phone conversation between the Secretary General and the President. Uh, did he again raise the? Uh, uh, there's been no no further phone conversation. There was a subsequent meeting with the foreign uh, with the foreign minister. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then we'll go to you. I have two questions. Yeah. I have two questions. One um, follow up on uh, agreement between Lebanon and Israel. Uh, what uh, role can the United Nations do uh, to implement the agreement peacefully? The second question I have: there are clashes and unrest in West Bank. Uh, many people were killed yesterday and today. Uh, if you have any reaction and statement. Uh, I would refer you to what uh, Mr. Venislan has been saying, the special coordinator, and expressing his, his very real concern for the, the increased violence uh, we have seen uh, in the occupied Palestinian territories, including in East Jerusalem. Um, on your first question, we will do whatever the parties would ask us uh, to do. We are, of course, uh, goes without saying, a big uh, proponent of peaceful diplomatic successes, right? Uh, when issues have been uh, a source of tension between countries for, for a long time. The U.S. is mediating in this uh, particular process, uh, but we will support the parties in whatever way we can uh, to ensure the success of the agreement. Okay. Uh, sorry, Evelyn, and then we'll go. She had her hand up, and then Linda. Thank and you, Steph. Is there any update on the death, uh, the killing of migrants in Libya, uh, who did it, and so forth? And secondly, you getting volunteers for a force in Haiti? Uh, on the um, on the issue of of, uh, of migrants off the coast of of Libya. Um, you know, whether it's in, in Libya or other, pl or we've seen it in the Mediterranean, uh, people risking their lives just to seek a better future and put their hands, uh, their, f their lives in the hands of criminal gangs, right? I mean, this is again underscores the need for true global implementation of the comprehensive uh, migration compact. And countries of origin, countries of transit, countries of, uh, of destination, need to agree on how to manage the flow of human beings, which, is un which has existed since human beings could walk, right? And it just, right now, it is mostly controlled by criminal gangs, and we see, uh, we see the impact. On Haiti, those are really, at this point, um, bilateral issues between the Haitian authorities and various uh, member states. Uh, Linda, and then Ms. Salome. <clears throat> Thank you, Steph. I have a question regarding the Ukrainian conflict. I believe yesterday you mentioned that the Secretary General spoke to the Ukrainian president. I did. Okay. Um, in regard to that, did he speak about the prospects of a political solution to the conflict? 
And does the Secretary General have a view that perhaps a political solution looks further, you know, further down the road? Or, it, I mean, and I, in other uh, words, are there any discussions, quiet discussions going on? Well, if, the they were quiet, if, they were qui if, if they were quiet, I'm not sure I would scream How about them. How about if you can make them louder? Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, no, in all seriousness, I, you know, I don't think the Secretary General sees that we're moving in the right, uh, in the right direction. And he's been very clear about what he sees, which is that there's no immediate prospect uh, for negotiations. I think what we're seeing in the last few, uh, few days, uh, I think only cements that, uh, that opinion. That is not stopping him from uh, trying to gain traction on a number of other issues, uh, which are critically important, notably the grain initiative and the issue of fertilizers. Ms. Salome. Thank you, Seth. Um, on Haiti, uh, I did see your remarks yesterday, and you acknowledged that there was no desire or request from Haitian authorities for a peacekeeping force. Mm -hmm. Uh, over the weekend, there were demonstrations in Washington, D.C. by Haitians for Haiti, for Haiti, for attention to Haiti. Um, and many were very clear that th there as well that they didn't want intervention from outside of the country. So my question is, uh, has there been any talk about helping with elections there? What people there were calling for and people on well, the streets of Haiti have been calling for I is mean, a new election. What, what, what is the UN doing to facilitate that? You know, we, we have a political mission on the ground that is there to help uh, with the political process, help the national authorities, also help support uh, the, the Haitian National Police. Um, what we need to see is also uh, Haitian leaders from all quarters come together and put the interests of the Haitian people first and, and, and foremost. And I think that's what we're, we're – I can't speak for the Haitian demonstrators that we've seen, but I think a lot of it has to do with the frustration of, uh, of the political situation in, in the country. We've had elections. We've seen what's, uh, what, what's, what's happened. There is right now an immediate – critical humanitarian need, right? Uh, we need to get humanitarian goods out of the, uh, out of the port. Uh, we're seeing the beginning of a, of a spread of, of cholera. Um, we ha even before that, we, have, we were just not able to, to work, and the humanitarian community is not able to work in a country that we know has tremendous humanitarian needs. Benno. How did you know that I wanted to ask something? <laughs> Beno, you've been here for quite a while. I was while. literally yeah. just thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Okay. I'm, so, I, I'm sorry to reveal my secrets. <laughs> You're all being monitored on my phone. Um, yeah. This has to go fast in Haiti, right? Yeah. So which other country than the United States could be in, 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 in shape to do that? Would uh, you, would the SG, think that the United States is the country which uh, listen, should provide Listen, I think there, there's going to need to be quick action. Uh, I think I, I will leave it to you to, to kind of analyze which countries you think have the, not just the military, but the, the police uh, capacity to deal uh, with these sorts of, uh, of issues. I think there are a lot of countries that have something to, to bring about. Uh, we hope those contacts with the Haitian authorities uh, go quickly because you said it's, the, the, the needs are critical and the hours are counting. Uh, we'll go online. Uh, Iftikhar, do you have a question? Then we'll go to Abdel Hamid. Uh, thank you, Steph. Uh, I had another question, but it has been off. But uh, may I ask you that the, it has been quite a while uh, that we haven't had an update on the deadly floods in Pakistan. Could you uh, provide us an update on, on the situation? Well, if you bear with me, I'll get something to you tomorrow. We'll get our colleagues okay. to harvest information. Uh, Thank you. Abdel Hamid. Thank you, Stefan. Now, first, uh, do you expect Stefan de Mistura to meet with the press from now until the end of the month as the Security Council is about to start uh, discussing the issue on the, this Thursday and toward the end of the month as well? Uh, I will speak to Mr. Dimistor. You know, Miss, uh, you've you've known Stefan for a long time. Uh, if he feels it will be, uh, it will move the process forward. He will gladly speak with you uh, if he thinks this is a time for, as Linda would put it, more quiet diplomacy. Then he won't. But we will raise it with him. Yes, Alan. 
Thank you, Stefan. The, the, the ESG several times uh, expressed his concerns regarding the rising, uh, rising uh, danger of the nuclear conflict, mm -hmm. uh, as we remember. And uh, today, the Secretary General of NATO did a press conference, and he stated that next week the, the alliance is going to conduct nuclear deterrence uh, uh, drills and um, the same time they he assessed the nuclear posture of Russia and he said that there are no changes in it So do you have any messages to NATO in these circumstances? I mean, the, 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 the message that of concern that the secretary expressed about the the unthinkable that should not even be thinked about uh, Nuclear warfare uh, is valid uh, Across the board Okay, uh, Ms. Kubiak, it is up to you, and thank you. Hasta mañana.